uh, play to Berlin. Which I sort of expected, but I didn't really know what to do against. Because in reality, very few people do. When we are playing a, an even game against someone of similar strength to us, usually we need to give something in order to obtain the initiative. Just how shrewd and cunning Ali Reza can be even with uh, very little time. I want to show you a game just to prove that I play these lines that I played against former world number two and a bit of a superstar, Gata Kamsky. Time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery.
enjoy 12 days of chess heaven at the Chessable Sunway Sieges International Chess Festival. Escape to the sun this December and take part in this spectacular Chessable Sunway Chess Festival situated in Sieges, near Barcelona. Play alongside top GMs including Ivanchuk, Esipenko, Adiban and more. 10 round open tournaments with over 27,000 euros in prizes. Chess lectures from GMs most days, beer tasting plus sushi, pizza, paella and cocktail masterclasses. World Cup watch parties, table tennis, table football and blitz chess tournaments. Even better, Chessable Pro members play for free. You can find out more by going to Sunway Siege's website. Visit chessable.com slash sunway. Okay. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, show. So I will be taking on challenges. Uh, and I prefer, in general, uh, when the games are not too long. So like 3 plus 0 or 3 plus, uh, plus 2 are the best. Like 5 is uh, nice, but um, it does not give the, the chance for uh, too many people to play. So uh, yeah, let's just get going. Uh, Against Manuel. Good luck, Manuel. And uh, from Puerto Rico. To be honest, uh, I mean, chess players normally they they know all the flags, but I'm uh, I had to look it up. Uh, not sure I ever played someone from Puerto Rico. Mm, if he's there. So yeah, hope hope you're all doing uh, doing fine, everybody. Uh, I'm. Uh, a little bit cold. We have winter in uh, in Denmark currently. It's pretty cold. Uh, and uh, chess wise, I'm basically uh, trying to get ready for the European Championship of, of Blitz and uh, Rapid, which is next weekend, starting on Friday. So that's the main thing that is going on. And uh, Manuel from Puerto Rico seems to be not here currently. Maybe he will come back a little bit later. Uh, newest first. Let's play from... Uh, uh -huh. Chess 50 years from US. Is he here? Never easy to find uh, players. Uh. So we are playing three plus two. Ah, oh, nice. And the slum. An opening I have played a fair bit recently myself. It's actually uh, gotten a little bit out of fashion at a uh, at top level, but I think it's it's a decent opening. The slum should not be underestimated. And now we transpose to uh, a sort of Greenfeld uh, style position instead. Black could also have kept it in some more slav, uh, slav waters, let's say, uh, by taking on c4 early on. Uh, bishop f5. I think the, the critical move is generally to take on c4, and taking on c4 is a little bit better once white has committed the knight to c3, because the pawn is not so easy to get back. This, I have a feeling, should be a little bit better for me, because... Uh, the pawns on b5, b7 and d5 are a little bit weak. For instance, if queen b6, there is this typical tactic, knight takes d5. Uh, I guess black should play, I, I at least would have played knight c6 here, just giving the pawn. Let me take on b7 and hope that there is some, uh, some counterplay. He plays queen b6. Or they played queen b6. So I can take here. Taking on b3 is not possible because I have the intermediate check on e7. But black will take back with the knight. Queen takes some knight c6. I will be a pawn up. But black has very active pieces. Hmm. It feels a bit too greedy to do it. I'm very confused. And I'm I can feel that I'm thinking incredibly slowly today. Uh, yeah. 
let's try to keep it simple. Uh, which I normally don't do, but uh, maybe for today. At least for the first game. I remember the first game, my last Banter Blitz, I did not... Uh, uh, I did not win, so... <laughs> uh, question from Forget About It on Twitch. How come I gave up my promising streaming career? Well, uh, I started to stream during the pandemic and I, I was streaming for a couple of months, but it simply, uh, yeah, it simply takes so much time and I never really considered it my... Uh, I mean, it was sort of an intermediate uh, solution for when there was no chess tournaments to be played. And once the chess tournaments uh, got back, the whole plan was uh, basically to uh, uh, to focus on them instead. And I wasn't sure whether it was possible to combine it with some streaming or uh, or whether I had to to stop. Uh, but it turned out, I think it's, it's, of course, different for different people. But for me, at least... Uh, uh, streaming is also sort of a full-time profession, and uh, uh, well, I, I chose uh, sort of to play chess as my actual full-time profession instead. So I found it uh, uh, even more enjoyable. So that's the reason. Uh, ah, Manuel is back in chat. Hello. If you challenge me again, I will accept. Hmm. This is a bit confusing. Okay, let me. I want to play for activity. So rook takes c1, rook takes c1. Uh, knight takes a2. I want to enter with something like rook c7. And I will not be a pawn up, but I will have the initiative, which I think is more, more important. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, 97 is it's probably a good move. Like. In general, black should be aiming to uh, to fight for activity rather than uh, taking this pawn on a2. I mean, technically, I can play the move a3, which is uh, rather greedy. I can also play rook c7. Knight takes b6, rook takes b7. Uh, but I'm not sure that it works. I can also, I mean, I could just move the bishop, of course, but... I don't want to do it. Maybe I have no no good option. Like knight takes a2, at least I have rook, uh, rook a1. But rook takes a2 is a bit uh, a bit of an, an issue, I guess. Uh, not sure exactly what I do. I guess I will have to give up b2 and play for some... Uh, maybe I can enter on, on the c file. But I want my rook on c7. That's why I didn't like to play bishop c7. <laughs> So this is actually not uh, not fantastic for me. Let me let me do it in a very simple simple way. Maybe even rook b1 is possible. Let me no, I will go bishop d6. Rook takes b2, I will try to enter. So knight c6, therefore the expected move. And now I'm sacrificing sort of a few of my pawns. Uh but if they take, then I play rook c8 check. And the threats are quite dangerous. So I'm not sure that black can take. What, what else can they do? I guess bishop f8 makes a lot of sense. But I will play, I will take it and play b5, and then maybe I'm a bit better. Hard to say. Hang on. Yeah, this is also interesting, but at least now I'm I'm covering all my weak squares. Uh, or I'm covering the, the weak pawn, rather, I should say. So if I get one more move, b5, I'm able to enter. So that's why they don't allow it. But okay, knight takes b4. At least now I have some serious activity. Uh, and if not knight takes b4, then I can, I'm threatening to push b5, after which I'm just much better. So uh, things are looking a bit better if I understand this correctly, which again uh, remains to be seen if I do or not. But yeah, now I guess enter. Uh, 
Now we are getting a bit low on time, but it's three plus two, so plenty. Uh, I mean, plenty of time is maybe too strong, but at least we are not. Uh, we are probably not going to get flagged anytime soon. Let's make it the solid way. I could have taken twice on C4 as well, but it looked too messy. I thought this was a bit, a bit simpler. Yeah, maybe I will even take this. If D takes, I play rook C7, and we play this ending, five against the like rook takes and uh, rook takes C4. And this, I think, actually is uh, is incredibly dangerous for, for black. A computer versus computer? Probably uh, closer to a draw than a win, but two humans, I think it's uh, you are a big favorite to win this, especially in a blitz game. Uh, okay, I should not forget about the time. I want to go here and here. And now this pawn is dropping off, and I think the game is uh, is over. Two pawns you can never really fight. But, uh, but good fight. I mean, my opponent probably this 1500 is uh, provi provisional rating because uh, it was very far from 1500 level. Okay, let's try against Manuel, who uh, previously uh, was not here. Okay, let's play e5. And now it's 3 plus 0, so I should be a little bit faster. Uh, <clears throat> let's see what we can do here. If knight g5, maybe bishop c5, some Traxler gambit. Ah, but d4, oh. Some old gambit lines that I ought to remember, but I really don't, so. Is there a way to step out of the of the common theory here? Of course, taking on e4 is, uh, is the best move, by far. But uh, it's probably not the most interesting move. I want to play something about... Yeah. Okay. Can't see it. So let's go for the main line. <clears throat> and now, again, many options. Uh, let's try to play something a bit rare. Queen d7. I mean, a5, h5, d8, all exists. Queen d7 also makes some sense. If takes, I guess I can take back with the queen. Already 20 seconds down, which uh, if you were to. Uh, Ask like a, a proper blitz player like Nakamura or someone is 20 seconds down is way too much, but but for this game I'm hoping it's okay. Uh now my opponent is thinking a bit as well. I guess they should or he should take and take on d4. That's at least what I would have done. Because here now I'm able to keep the pawn. And to me it's not clear what uh, what the compensation is. So, uh, let's go h6. Yeah, now I'm simply keeping the pawn, so I think I'm doing very well here. Uh, of course, never too late to, to blunder anything, but uh, so far, so good. Queen d5 then developed the bishop. Uh, the problem is, uh, for him, well, that there is simply no compensation. Uh, I mean, after I get my bishop out to f5 or g4, it's it's a clear pawn, so should be fine. Let me see. B4. Okay, b4 makes some sense to get b5 later. But after b6, knight b3, I'm covering uh, b5. So still a lot of work for black to be to be done. Bishop f5 or bishop g4? Maybe bishop. Bishop g4 is more solid, I feel. Uh, should I attack his pawn? Sorry, D D three maybe some C four, not really an issue, but also maybe no reason to allow it. Let's yeah, trade some pieces always good when you are when you are up material, I guess. So okay, let's take. Completely unclear why I took now, but uh, probably doesn't hurt. I would like to go rook eight, but it's not covered currently, so uh, I have to come up with something else. But yeah, it's still, uh, even though I'm not very accurate, I still don't believe there is enough compensation, so. Yeah. 
sorry, um, uh, yeah, as I said, Scandinavian winter is not to be uh, taken lightly. I'm a little bit uh, under the weather currently. Can I take this guy? Let's take and see if it works. Some C4 I take and I come back. So it should be fine. And with two pawns, that's a lot better than one because everything is, uh, uh, is completely safe now. So it takes, yeah, queen e7, there is knight c6. Hello, I saw you had nice dreadlocks back in the day. Was it inspired by Yogis or Rastafaris? Uh, oh, I mean, uh, I guess you could say that it was inspired by, by Rastafaris or sort of this reggae, reggae music in, in general. I, I, I was and still am a big fan, so... Uh, not that it was in any way a statement or something like that, but uh, it was definitely some connection. Uh, let me try to, what should I do here? Let's take, try to keep it as simple as possible. Always a good idea. Maybe I can go here later. Also knight d3 should be a threat, so. Uh, yeah, now knight c2 instead. And looks like, as long as I don't get flagged, but usually you don't get flagged when you're a couple of pieces up. So thank you for the game. Let's try to play against uh, an Indian player. That was uh, a long time ago in these Bantu Blitzes. I'm not sure if it has to do with time zones or if they are elsewhere, but not so frequent with, uh, with Indians. Knight h6. Maybe pretending to be Nakamura with all his uh, funky first moves yesterday in his match against Paravian. don't know if you followed it, but uh, he played a lot of first moves. I guess, in, I mean, in Blitz, it doesn't matter that much, I guess. You get some position. With black, it's more scary, but with white, to start with a3 or a4 or h4, something like h3, whatever he did, like, you are actually still uh, quite a big favorite to equalize, so... It's not that bad. With black, giving a tempo is, is uh, more, more dangerous, I think. Uh, but with white, you have a lot of freedom. Let's see. Uh, I want to be aggressive. Maybe I can play g4. To go g5. Okay, knight g8 is, is a good move, probably. Also natural. Maybe I want to... If I get, if I can, I think h5 is a good move for black now. h6 is a bit passive. So now I get this setup with the knight on g3, the pawns on e4 and g4. Uh, like if we have to compare this with something more known, I would say that I have an excellent uh, Samish Nimso Indian. Like this 4a3 or 4f3 uh, line in the Nimso. Uh, I seem to have a fantastic version of that. Uh, because this is more or less how you how you develop your pieces in that line. But now I'm curious, should I play g5, let him trade the rooks? Like, not now, but, but soon, or should I go for some other idea? I think I will try to push it. Almost treating it like a Sicilian. I'm not sure. Uh, like a, some English attack where you push this h4, g4, and then g5. Let's see. Knight g8, maybe I will go aggressive with queen h5. I think so. Why not? Uh, the queen f8 most probably. And then... Yeah, knight h5. G7 is hanging. F6 probably has to be played, but to cover G7, but uh, yeah, F6 is not uh, very trustworthy. Maybe. Can I, I can't take it. Takes, takes Bishop G5. But yeah, Knight, knight F4 feels more uh, sort of classy to me, let's say. Uh, I'm threatening knight g6, so queen f7, and then, 
Yeah, yeah, many ways, but I, I mean, like the yeah. Okay, now, now there's a fork. But otherwise, yeah. Bishop f3, bishop h5 was my was my plan. So, okay, thank you for the game, PMGI from India. Let's play our traditional uh, game with Jup. I always play one game uh, with Jup, or he's always around at least. So, uh, one one game per session, I mean. So let's let's play the Karakan. Mm, but this is a Spanish player, Jup, uh, Fide Master. Quite dangerous in Blitz. Uh, at least I'm usually getting under heavy fire, so I'm trying to be a bit more solid this time. Uh, G6. G6 is what I usually do because I always felt that this should be a decent version for, for Black, like going this tempo loss. But I guess this sort of, um, how to say, hybrid between Pirts and uh, Modern and so on is, is simply so bad that even with the, with the tempo down, uh, you are still worse with, uh, with Black. If I recall correctly, they usually take on f6 uh, earlier. But it could also be that I'm playing the moves in the wrong move order. I don't remember. Because I, I have definitely played uh, this kind of positions uh, a bit previously in uh, in Blitz and Rapid. Now maybe Queen b6. I mean, with Knights, g8 and, uh, and b8, no castle. It feels risky, Queen b6. But on the other hand, if I win the pawns, uh, like white center, like if I get the d4 pawn, the white center just completely collapses. So, and queen c3 is uh, technically defending the the pawns, but uh, but looks very uh, sort of ugly, very very ugly. Yeah, takes maybe even knight f6 is possible here, and then knight bd7 next move. It's an odd way of playing because bishop takes e5 was my intention and then knight h6 and castle, but maybe this is even more interesting. Because now I'm I'm my long-term idea is to get a very strong bishop on, on g7. So we will see. Uh, okay, I guess bishop takes and push e5. Excuse me for Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, now I'm a pawn up, so things should be should be very promising. Like it's also a central pawn, which usually is a great uh, great thing. Like a side a flank pawn, you are never really sure, like if it's enough or if it's even that valuable. But a central pawn up is usually uh, enough and now yeah this b4 is is kind of nice i thought because it really breaks white at uh, at uh, at his strongest point which is something i was thought was a nice thing to do <laughs> i don't know in hindsight if, if it makes too much sense but uh i can play b th actually b3 looks very strong or not with this idea but B3, the B3 pawn will be hanging, so it's it's actually not that... Uh, maybe it was simpler simply to take it and have the better structure and the pawn up. Now I will have a pawn up, but I will no longer have the better structure, I guess. Yeah, that was a bit unnecessary, probably. Actually, it's interesting to not take the pawn, but okay. Knight F4 check to go for the initiative. Should I do it? It's a very weird thing to do. Let's let's try. I mean, my point is just I want to castle short, which also, by the way, is not clear why. No, I changed my mind. But I want to put a rook on, on the f file and then uh, go knight d3 on the next move instead. Maybe, yeah. So this and here I think I have a better version because now this is hanging. And if something like f3, then I take and, and uh, my pieces are much better than... Uh, and in the other end, or rather, white pieces are are worse. And now, yes, knight to c five, and 
Well, it's a pawn up, but it's also like uh, a dominating position or position. So, like, or <laughs> a dominating position, positionally speaking, I should say. Yeah, now only not to get flagged. Usually should be possible to avoid. If knight d2, I will just take it. Uh, again, mainly because I don't want to be tricked in the end. I guess my bishop was stronger than the knight, but uh, if. If something is good enough, then usually it's better to just do it in blitz. Mm. This really isn't uh, the cleanest technique I've, uh, I've produced in my life, but presumably it's good enough. The position is so overwhelming, so... Now my idea at least is simple. I will just push the pawns. Yeah. Rook drops, pawn on a6 is dropping. Yeah. Okay. Was actually surprisingly a uh, smooth game. I think this queen b6 move was a little bit of a shock for my opponent in the opening. But thank you for the game. Uh, let me try to... Uh, Start another one. Uh, let's play against Mahmoud from no what from Turkey. Uh huh. Interesting. Let's go e4. Best in test, as Bobby Fischer said. Uh, Mahmoud, sixteen hundred. I think I had sixteen hundred the first time I was in. Uh, uh, in Turkey playing, I was playing the world cadet, like world under 16 teams a championship in 2006. I was 13 playing last board for Sweden. Uh, that was uh, a fairly long time ago. Since then, I played many times in Turkey. World Junior, Olympiad, a couple of world uh, kids tournaments. Now I will try to channel my inner Johnny Hector. And play the Vienna. Let's see, knight takes e4, queen f3. Knight f3 also makes a lot of sense, but queen f3. Hoping that black will take on c3, so I take with the deep pawn, and then I, I'm trying to castle uh, uh, long. Uh, what got me into chess? Uh, yeah, definitely nobody pushed me. That's that's clear. Actually, what got me into chess was mainly uh, just by my grandfather playing at home, uh, and I thought it looked uh, looked fairly interesting uh, or fairly fun. And what really got me into chess, to be honest, like not the first time, but let's say why I played a little bit more, uh, is because I did play a little bit uh, with my grandfather at home, as as I mentioned. Uh, and that meant that the first time I got to the chess club, I was, to be honest, I'm not sure, like six or seven. I got to the chess club and the other kids, they had not played with their grandfather at home. So I had played quite a bit more than them, which meant that I won against all other kids. And uh, I was much more uh, interested uh, in winning than playing when I was a kid. So uh, it was great for me to, uh, uh, to be playing chess because, uh, yeah, I simply had more training than the others. So I continued. And then, I mean, of course, later on, you, you sort of understand the more subtle uh, uh, enjoyments of chess as well, uh, and that it's not only about tricking your opponent in the beginning. Uh, but that's how it started. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. Like, if my queen was not an f3, I would be happy. But I think this queen is really badly placed. Uh, like, I think castling was a simple enough move for black and just hinting at my queen and I would have to move it anyway. But this also maybe if the knight moves, then there is bishop h4. So, uh, yeah, I don't think I've, uh, <laughs> I did the best out of this strange, uh, strange line, but I will, I will try to castle long. How will I do? This bishop e3 is also very ugly. Actually, once the bishop drops back, my queen will even be 
trapped. But I don't really have any option, I think. Boiler Slud. I'm reading, I'm, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm playing, but I'm also reading on, uh, on Twitch and on the Chess24 uh, chat, the event chat. I'm trying to keep, keep an eye on both chats, uh, but I'm also trying to avoid getting flagged. <laughs> yeah. Bishop d6, I don't like so much because uh, now the queen is actually safe on h4. Whereas with the bishop on e7, there was some uh, some attacks against the queen. So for instance, now bishop takes h7. It's a threat because the bishop on g4 is hanging. So uh feels to me like this is a somewhat loose for, for black, but now I'm curious. Can I take on d5? Knight takes d5. Knight takes d5. What is going on? Queen takes, king in f7. Queen g6, king goes back. Do I have a move there? I don't see it. I would have to move. I'm threatening knight takes d5 as well. But I have... My feeling tells me that there was something there, but I, I couldn't calculate it properly. Uh... But this is also very strong because, for instance, h6, I take on d5, and then the queen is hanging with check on e7, which is very important. Uh, let's see. And what what other ways are there for black? Or is there for black to uh, to defend? I can, actually, I don't see it. Like bishop takes h7 is also a major threat here. Could be that this is just. Uh, Almost winning for me. It, it's not that surprising because uh, lots of pieces are hanging. Like h7, d5, g4, queen is pinned. Uh, so it's not that surprising. But uh, yeah, I actually don't see a move. Maybe something like knight takes d4 is the best try. But uh, yeah, it would surprise me if this is enough. So what do we do? Like knight takes d5. Is move. I mean, simplest maybe just bishop takes f6 and then take on g4. Kind of picking up, uh, simply picking up a piece. That must be good enough. There will be one check on f2, but as far as I can see, it's only one check. So. Actually, taking here to get the queen trade in makes sense as well. But again, my queen will, my king will be stuck in the center. I, this might actually be more, more solid. Looks more dangerous, but I think it's more solid. I will take back with the knight on e2. And yeah, flag. So, thank you for the game. Uh -huh. <coughs> Now I will play with Ella Nilsson from Denmark, fellow Copenhagener. Let's see, how should I start the game? Let's start with e4. If I'm playing person from my own city, I have to take it seriously and play, play the main lines. c5 played. Okay, I'm already uh, sort of uh, I'm thinking I will not play the main lines. Let's see, knight f3. If I can cook up something, something rare. Uh, let's play knight c3. And e5. e5 is a line that in Blitz I have actually struggled with as, as black guy. For instance, I lost a game to Luke McShane in, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, what, what is it called? Is it the King's Head Pub Blitz in London? A traditional bits tournament uh, in a pub every year, which I played once. Uh, and there I went to the, I think it was semifinals, could also have been quarterfinals. And uh, Luke McShane simply crushed me in this line with white. So, yeah, since then I have pretty bad memories, so why not play it? <laughs> e6. So I think if I understood it correctly, which again is not entirely clear, I think generally the idea is to go g3, bishop g2. And get a strong bishop on the diagonal. 
that's what I will do. But I was also now quite <laughs> tempted by D4 and go for quick activity. But I think this is more in line with sort of the traditional uh, uh, mm, traditional strategic ideas of this line. Yes, this bishop will be... Actually, Luke, I think, even played bishop e2, bishop f3. So not creating a weakness with g3, but with the same idea of exerting pressure on the diagonal. Uh, yeah, and that worked very well for him as well. So, <laughs> yeah. Rook b8, I think in general you are supposed to play, uh, you're supposed to play a4. Also here, a4. Or actually, a4 was not immediately necessary, but uh, I think it's useful anyway. So rook b8, a5, and I get this grip uh, on the squares, which I think is uh, is pretty nice for me. Now, if b5, I always take and always some, some weakness. So... Yeah, this is more, more more or less how it how it went in my game against Luke. It was some disaster like this that at some point you simply couldn't move any of the pieces anymore. Yeah, now I think I'm actually winning the the full rook. I guess it can go back. I will take it and then uh, uh, bishop d7. And because both my pieces are hanging, there will only be one exchange. But yeah, definitely. Enough to win. Okay, let's make knight. Uh, let's play knight seven to go for this uh, slightly strange uh, a position where uh, I'm actually two exchanges up, which is a very rare thing. But I guess the position is uh, is open enough, open uh, like open enough for the exchange for the rooks to become very strong later on. Also, this pawn on b seven is a big target, so. Uh, Mm. Knight d7 makes a lot of sense. I think I will just simply try to trade more stuff. That's generally what what you're supposed to do when you are ahead in material, I guess. My next tournament, yeah, I, I answered this at the at the beginning of the show that I will play the European Rapid and Bliss Championship starting in, in Poland in, in one week exactly. That's my next big, big thing, and I hope it will be uh, be an enjoyable experience. I have played once in the European Rapid and Blitz Championship, uh, but it was some time ago. Okay, let me see. Okay, I'm tempted just to give back the exchange to uh, one of the exchanges, I should say. And now the point, my point at least, is that the pawn on b7 is very weak. So, uh, if I can just put some pressure on it, it should be enough. But she's fighting very well here, I have to say. Not making it easy at all for me. Uh, yeah, this is very passive. What have I done? Let's go. For this bishop takes, I have bishop e2. And if not, I'm pushing the pawns at least. Ah, actually, I should have played queen b6. I should have played queen b6 last move. Forcing the trade of queens. That would have won instantly. Uh, I would have to do it on this move instead, but now maybe... Uh, after the queen trade, I think it's it's quite uh, quite over. Now the pawns will just, just roll. And I'm up on time. This is quite rare. Okay, thank you for the game, Ellen. So I keep my bragging rights on uh, in in Copenhagen for the time being. <laughs> and uh, yeah, tricky line, always a tricky line. This one. Let's now try to play against. Uh, hmm. I should make sure to always uh, accept people with uh, who are currently active. Yeah, look, I mean, uh, this position after, uh, let's say, 15 moves is uh, is a nightmare that I have tried uh, to experience myself. So I definitely have to be very careful as black. <laughs> Shadow mate from, from Canada. Hello, how are you? Good luck. Uh, A4, that's a bit, uh, a little bit passive. Or a little bit too uh, too solid in my opinion, but 
make some sense. Mm. Uh huh. Bishop g2. Here there are two options. You can either take, which I tend to like in uh, in rapid and blitz, but I think, at least from an objective perspective, the stronger move is always to uh, uh, to just play d4, at least without a4 and a6 included. So I think one point here is if white tries to play f4, you can play d3 as black. Uh, maybe I should have played d3 actually on the previous move. But now let's go h5. H4, and then uh, later E5, yeah, okay, this. But now, yeah, this pawn is a bit annoying for white, I think. Not entirely sure, but I, it feels like it, because as soon as knight F3 comes, then, uh, then H3. And now I'm getting curious if actually H3 is possible immediately as a pawn sacrifice. I think it might be. Knight takes, I can take with the rook. This, I think, is very good for me, because now I have queen h4. I pick up the two pieces. And if bishop takes, the bishop was looking strange, so at least I should have decent compensation. But uh, yeah, this one, I think, is, is very, very good for me, because almost always the two pieces are stronger than, than rook and pawn in the middle game. Uh, let's see. F5, okay. Let's play bishop d6, threatening to take on, on uh, g3. A uh, king f2. Looks uh, looks brave. Yeah, it's, I think the pieces are simply too strong, and there is not much else to say here. <laughs> I, it's, I guess it's completely winning for uh, for me, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, g5, okay, knight g4. Now, yeah, now the knight on g3 is hanging as well, so. I think this is completely over. So, yeah, the big mistake from, from white was to take with the knight on h3. I had to take with the bishop first. Uh, I have to be very observant of the tactical tricks. But, okay, thank you for the game. Let's try to play. Uh, I have to uh, play with someone who is here. No flag this time. Interesting. No flag. Uh -huh. Let's play the Slav. Okay, let's go. Usually I take, uh, let's take. I've, I've played this a little bit recently. It's not so bad. The old lines of the slav. Let's go. This I'm not sure what the proper name is uh, for this knight b6 uh, line, but I have always known it as the sokol of slav. The h4 was a move. Uh, my opponent is very well prepared. Uh, h4 was a move that was invented some in some European Championship. I think it was maybe four or five years ago. Possibly by uh, by Anton Korobov. It's a very interesting idea, h4. It looks insane, but uh, the point is that it's space advantage that white has. Uh, can quickly turn out to be uh, become a, a kingside attack. So you have to be really careful as black. And of course, I, I don't remember uh, like a single thing of how to <laughs> how to defend this. But uh, mm, but h4 definitely definitely an interesting move. Uh, so I'm looking for ways to get counterplay. Like I know that f5 is one of the main ideas, but currently it looks a bit loose. Maybe some knight f4 will come. I could also castle and see what this supposed attack of white is is really worth. Is there actually <laughs> a real attack, or is it just? Uh, uh, it's just a bluff, yeah. So f5, knight f4, maybe now. What is going on there? Do I have some? I don't see it. f5, knight f4. 
Hmm. I want to make some active move, but I'm not sure what. Bishop d6 maybe to play e5 one day, but also to play f5 without knight f4. But bishop d6, yeah, it feels wrong to me. To be absolutely honest, I don't like the move, but I did it. I made it anyway. Now, but yeah, queen b3 is also a quite, kind of an annoying move because now the knight on b6 is a bit loose. But yeah, I will play bishop b4, potentially followed by c5. Uh, should I play bishop b4 now? I guess I will. At some point, maybe this move king h8 also makes sense to play f5. But yeah, I'm, I'm passive. I did not manage to get this counterplay that you need in this line. <laughs> so I'm definitely a lot worse here. I had g5. If I take twice, am I getting mated? Uh, maybe not, but it's still very dangerous. Let's let's just play h5. But yeah, I'm worse. There is no doubt. Also, I have no time, I realize now. Almost no time. I have to speed up. Wow. Yeah. Let's see. I will answer the Grand Prix question after the game because I have so little time. So uh, I definitely will address it. At least now White has to come up with a plan as well. Yeah, this, but here, at least I have some sort of uh, counterplay, I thought. Maybe it isn't actually that much, but... Uh, White is kind of forced back a little bit. So... Yeah, if it's worth a pawn, I don't know, but... If White is castling long, then at least I have some threats. Again, enough, who knows, but it's something at least. Long castle, maybe even I, I take immediately on d4. Uh -huh. No, yeah, h, h5 will come. This is looking ugly. Oof. I have so far been completely outplayed in this game. I want to make this very clear. At least now with h5, I can take pawn with check. That's good news. Let's take. What is this? I'm pawn down, no time. Maybe knight g6. Knight b3 check also is there somewhere. Somewhere in the mix. But also 20 seconds. What is this? Yeah, unfortunately, White can start by taking on d8. So now it's lost. Okay, well played, well played. I was completely crushed. This line is very dangerous for uh, for black with the with h four. Uh, no chance whatsoever. Mm. Uh huh. So. Let's play against Mariam Fatima, another Indian player. So what was the line in the Grand Prix? Uh, A4. I don't immediately have any thoughts on this A4 that you mentioned there. In general, I thought A4 was a bit slow in the Grand Prix. It could be that I have to update my, uh, my knowledge. Mm. D6 looks a bit risky, I guess. Uh, or sorry, E6, as you write. I would probably look into whether d6 is possible instead. It looks more natural to me. Okay, let's play the Leningrad.
Yeah, knight c6 has not been played that much uh, for a long time. Usually they nowadays play c6. But it's an interesting sideline. Or it's an interesting, not sideline, but uh, how to say, it's an interesting old line. So your the point is to, to push e5. I do allow the trade of queens, but I, I get uh, the grip in the center. So after, usually white plays d5 before e5 to be able to take en passant. This looks uh, looks pretty comfortable for me. Now we get a sort of King's Indian style position, but uh, one in which I played f5 without having to move the knight from f6. So usually you move it to h5, then push f5, then come back. So in some sense, I've gained uh, a bit of time here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, now the question is, how should I continue the athlete? Usually f4 is possible, but also this slower h6, g5 uh, push is possible. That's the problem. I'm playing quite a bit of Dutch now, especially online. Uh, but I'm never sure how to attack. And the whole point is to, is to attack. So. Um, Perhaps I should reconsider whether it's a good choice for me, but in general, it leads to a rather fun games, I believe. So G4, H5, H5 will go like this rather than F4, E4, central play. So I, I don't know if it's a matter of taste or if there is one thing that is better than the other, but uh, yeah, now it, it's a bit simpler for me because now the pawns are really storming forward. So I, I believe E4 is dubious positionally. Like or strategically, because now I get this threat of f3, which is uh, very very scary for white. Mm. I guess a king's Indian player would simply win this uh, within uh, very few moves. But I'm not a natural king's Indian player, and I'm not entirely sure what the most uh, efficient way to do it is. Should I take or should I just push the H pawn? I will. I will try to do it in a sort of uh, how to say uh, in the most strategic way. So H five, Bishop H six, then the Bishop can come to this diagonal, <coughs> and uh, my pawn will, will go to H four later on. So I'm I'm keeping a sort of uh, uh, the the long term aspects of my attack going, not really trying to to give an immediate mate. Which I think is how you are supposed to do it. But again, who knows whether I'm right or not. Bishop h6 also made sense. Uh, but this this looked good enough. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. King h8, rook g8 is one of the natural plans, but. If there is something faster, I'm not sure. Forget about it. Have I ever caught a cheater over the board? Uh, I have not caught anyone, no. But uh, I have played in a tournament once in uh, Dubai some uh, five, six years ago. I don't remember actually the exact year. But some years ago, I played a tournament. I played one player. Uh, I won the game, and then I think the next day or two days later, he was caught. And he was caught like uh, red-handed. He actually used, uh, he had a phone that he uh, hid in the bathroom. And the phone had the position of his game and, and so on. Like it was very clear and he was immediately kicked out and banned and so on. Uh, a grandmaster. Uh, so it happened to me. But the funny thing is, of course, that I won this game. Uh, and that's a curious detail because, of course, he was looking at the, the engine uh, and still lost. And the only explanation I can find for how it happened is that he would make his move. He would go to the bathroom and he would look up, like let's say, the top three lines of the engine. Uh, and then he would know what he would reply against those three moves. And he would come back to the board and see which of the three I have made. But probably I was never... <laughs> 
uh, strong enough to uh, make one of the three best moves. I simply made move number four or move number five repeatedly. So he never had any use of this uh, of this cheating. That's my my explanation. I don't know if there is uh, another one, but that sounds like the most uh, likely thing to me. So I was simply too uh, uh, too weak to be <laughs> caught by the or I mean to be defeated by the cheater. Which I don't know if it's a good uh, good or a bad thing. Meanwhile, yeah, we are getting a bit low on time. It's three plus zero, so should be a little bit more careful. But I do believe that my attack should be winning here, although uh, yeah, the time uh, the time decided, of course. Mm. Monkey King. From China. Yeah, no, it was a fun. Uh, I mean, of course, not fun with the guy cheating, but it was, uh, uh, in some sense, also also funny. This that I was too uh, too weak to <laughs> to be cheated against. Now I'm following the recommendation of uh, Le Kuang Liam in his London course. Where he recommends this move order with 3c3, which looks very innocent, but is actually not as innocent as it looks at first sight. So you lose a tempo, but actually this combination of b6, bishop f5 is not uh, particularly good for black. So you actually get sort of a nice version of the queen's gambit. Let's see. I guess I will take Bishop G5, E3. And just develop naturally like a normal Queen's Gambit. That's what I uh, that's at least what I think what you're supposed to do here. You're keeping the bishop. So this would be very healthy for black if the pawn was back on b7. Then black would be having very comfortable equality. But with the pawn on b6, the pawn on c6 also is a little bit weak. And this, I think, should be enough to give me some edge here. But also I have seen that the engines, like modern engines, they are not uh, as afraid as a more sort of uh, traditional... Uh, uh, view would be so like I believe that I'm slightly better but uh, I also have this feeling that probably en the engines will say that black is uh, black is okay here I'm not sure how these two go go together like in a logical sense but uh, uh, that's how I feel about it at least knight a4 was probably dubious I to be honest I kind of missed that that he has this square on c7, or they have this square on c7. But now, yeah, rook c7. I'm, I'm hoping this tactic works. Like if he, if they take twice, then bishop g3, attacking both rooks. Uh, and if not, then the pawn on c6 is very weak, isn't it? My opponent's last move indicates that it. Kind of isn't that weak. Uh, knight takes c6, then my bishop is hanging. So I can take, take, and then take. But my king side is very weak then. Yeah, I don't I don't actually trust it. I will have to do something something else. Maybe f4 to just bolster up this knight. But look at my pieces like I like giving up the bishop pair and then knight on a4 bishop and it's complete lack of harmony. Uh that's uh that's terrible play by me. I'm sorry that you have to witness such a bad strategic play. But it's not so important in Blitz. Uh, like uh, it's equal material and uh, the game will be decided on some trick or on time. 
not by who has uh, slightly more weaknesses than the other. Mm, unlike maybe a more classical game. Knight h4. It's hanging on d5. I'm curious if there is some trick that I should be spotting. I don't spot it immediately, at least. Hmm. I mean, some trick. I mean, like knight takes g2, queen g6, some combination of that. Some bishop e4. But currently, yeah, the problem is I'm threatening knight f4. So then the knight will cover my uh, my king side. It will be a pawn up. So the only way, I think the only practical try is to take c, take d5. Uh, rook takes c7 and then uh, something. But uh, yeah, they don't go for it. Yeah, now it it uh, it looks quite solid, I believe. At least I don't see the, the, big, uh, the big issues here. Why not bring the bishop to the defense? Maybe even go bishop f3. And yeah. No, I'm confident. An, an extra central pawn is usually enough. Maybe move the king out of the way. Why not? Let's see. E6 is a move. Is it a good move? Let me just play it slowly. Yeah, and flag, but also... Actually, what did I do? Now the knight is hanging on f4. What, the, what is this? Ah, h3 was too slow. Ah, terrible. Okay, what to do? Uh, yeah. And now there is latest challenge from Lego. Without a flag, but may I guess that it's a Danish player, Lego. Because Lego is from Denmark. Could also just be the, the name. Maybe it's a common name somewhere in the world that I'm not aware of. Who knows? Also, are they here? Let's see. Maybe not yet. Hmm. Yeah. I haven't been to Legoland actually, although it's uh, in my country or the country where I reside and it's a very famous place, but yeah. Somehow never went. But Lego, Mr. Lego is not uh, not currently here, so. Let's see if we have some other players. Mm, let me refresh. And? Spanish player, Son how do you pronounce that? Tonox. I have no idea. Sorry if I offend someone who, <laughs> who speaks Spanish and would know how to pronounce an X at the first, as a first letter. Also, the question is whether he, they are here or not. I'm getting some new challenges let's see if it's a challenge from a few seconds ago it should be possible to uh, to see hmm not entirely sure Nord of Aue from Germany. What is this? Nord of Aue. Are they from Aue, probably? 
the former Bundesliga team from uh, from the German city of Aue. I'm not sure. Uh, Hokan is saying turn off premium only, but I think uh, the whole thing is that uh, I'm playing only against uh, premium uh, members. That's one of the perks of being being a premium member of uh, of Chess Twenty Four, that you get to, to play against uh, people like me. So I will not actually uh, turn it off. Mm. Yeah, this line I should know better because some 10 years ago or so we played it all the time with both colors. I had many games like I beat John Ludwig Hammer with white in an important game once, uh, but I also had some, some success with black a couple of times. So uh, a Rook C1, I should know it better. H5, maybe H4. Later on. That's one of the main ideas, at least. I want to provoke H4, H3 from white, then I will take, and F takes G3 will be quite ugly. <clears throat> so, uh, but sometimes after H4, white plays some bishop E5, and after I trap it with F6, uh, white actually gets a dangerous uh, initiative for the, for the piece. Like one or two central pawns and a lot of threats. Mm. So that's why I, I was a bit hesitant about this move, uh, h5. But on the other hand, it's the most uh, uh, critical way of playing. Like Usually on the previous move, white plays the move knight d2 to, to eliminate that, uh, that id. Okay, now as I promised, I will take... We'll go here. Knight e5, I will trade. Hmm... Yeah, knight d2, but now it feels to me that this move rook c1 is a bit of a waste for uh, for white. Of course, it makes uh, the d5 pawn hanging, but it's also a little bit slow. It's my feeling, but I'm not sure that I'm right, because bishop d3, short castle. Like the strategic uh, point for white in general here is that the king is very safe once it reaches like h2. Uh, so that's something that, in general, I should try not to allow, I guess. But uh, can I not allow it? That's another question. Yeah, queen f2, and on the next move, white will be in time to castle, and I don't really trust my position that much. Uh, white will later on break with e4, and my king will actually be the vulnerable one. But after knight f1, I'm happy, because now there is no short castle for white. So now I should be doing very well uh, from a strategic point of view. I think white really needs to play uh, uh, the king. Maybe not to h2 when the pawn on h4 is hanging, but uh, like to at least castle short. <clears throat> because now there is no attack. Like white, White's king will be safe on b1, that is correct. That is nice, but... There is no attack against my king because you cannot really push the, your pawns in front of your own king as white. So uh, that means that I'm basically have the bishop pair for free and also the better structure. And knight b5 is an interesting move because it does sort of trade off my uh, uh, my bishop pair, but. I don't think that I actually mind too much because. Uh, oh, did I have bishop? No, I did not because the bishop is hanging, is protected on b five. Okay, let's see. C six. If the bishop retreats, I think I will simply pick up the pawn. And if white tries to complicate matters with a five, I have the check and I will pick up the pawn. So yeah, this is beginning to look quite quite good for me. Yeah, for those of you who are not here from the start, I do have a little bit of a cold, so probably you can also hear it. 
but I'm confident it will be gone before my next chess tournament next week. So uh, maybe my body will also get used to the to the winter temperatures of Denmark. I'm curious after King C2. I can take on B2 and play Bishop A3 check. Now it's not not relevant because my opponent stopped it, but uh, I think I would not have done it anyway because. I like to keep the control when I'm material up. Uh, yeah, next week, as I have as I have mentioned, I will play uh, European Rapid and Blitz Championship in uh, Katowice, Poland. Huge event! I think by now it's almost a thousand players participating. Uh, so it will be a nice challenge. So this is, a, in some sense, a bit of a warm-up session for that. But I do hope I will play with higher quality than I have done today. Mm, but that's my next big uh, big event, which hopefully will be great fun. Maybe some mating threats. It's time to deliver mate in this game. Again, threatening mate. Yeah, now it's beginning to look very, very... No, wait. I thought this was winning, but maybe knight c4 and my queen is... No, but I have check and trade queens and then I will be a piece up. So, yeah, I think actually resignation was uh, was the correct choice there. But thank you for the game. Interesting uh, discussion. Some new challenges. Why must I lose to this... Actually, I don't see the end. Why must I lose to this B? Bogus. Uh -huh. I actually saw in the Bundesliga, very serious German team competition, the strongest league in the world. 2,600 rated player, Jagus Pehaj, play the Mora Gambit in his game against fellow 2,600 player. Uh, Konstantin Lupulescu. So some people still play it. I uh, I'm not sure entirely why. But if Pehaj can do it, then so can I. That's my logic. To be honest, probably a faulty logic because uh, uh, I cannot play like Pehaj in general. Ah, uh, Nodrao is a place in... Ah, uh, okay, okay. I thought it was Aue, like uh, like the city of Aue. I'm sorry. Yeah. I should probably know more about German geography if after playing Bundesliga for so many years, but uh, it's not always so easy. You go to a place and you are there. You are not so... Uh, like, you don't really know what you <laughs> what places you went past on the way there. Mm. What is this now? How do I generate play? That's the problem with me playing like Pehaj. When I play like this, I'm wondering why am I a pawn down? But when he does it, it looks so natural. Can I play h4? Yeah, I will play h4. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, maybe not... <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe it's such a small place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, trying to win the pawn on d6. That's why I play this move h4. And now I'm hoping that I will have some um, some attack. Yeah, maybe the bishop should have gone to d4 to free up this route but yeah my intention now is to put uh, pressure on on the d6 pawn and on this diagonal so i'm expecting rook f4 a to d8 yeah maybe bishop c6 is uh, is even better but yeah i'm just just some pressure maybe queen g3 and after that i might threaten to take on on d6 uh because after we trade everything, I take on e5, then the queen will be hanging and the pawn on g7 will be hanging. So that's my uh, my small tactical plan. 
if I'm allowed. Actually, knight d5 is another move. Takes, e takes, and then take on, uh, sorry, knight d5, takes, takes, and then I take here and play d6 in the end. Uh, yeah, but this, let me see now, let me think. Here I actually need to think very carefully about my life. I will take, takes, takes. If queen takes, I take on e5. So I like, cannot really take. Maybe something like f6, and I'm still an exchange down. But here I feel that I'm beginning to have pretty decent uh, compensation. Like, uh, actually very good compensation, to be honest. Uh, mm, probably still a mess, but uh, wouldn't be surprised if white is actually better now, which I definitely wasn't some five moves ago. Why must I lose to these bogus? Yeah. Something we have asked ourselves many times. <laughs> yeah, f6 only move, I thought. The nice thing is that my king is kind of safe still. Like, knight is covering the d1 square and also blocking the c file. Uh, actually, queen g6 is a funny move that is possible now, but. Uh, yeah, it's I guess simpler simply to take first on e5 and and then queen g6 later on. Point is that the bishop on c6 is hanging. And again, my king is is uh, completely safe. So like queen a7, I simply drop back. There should not be any any counterplay. At least not enough counterplay. Maybe even block the the d file to prevent counterplay there and yeah, the ending is is fairly hopeless. Even without uh, uh, the minus pawn, the two pieces usually are far superior to the than the rook. So I covered the e d two square, so black cannot enter, and now I'm collecting the pawns. And uh, yeah, the rook simply can't do a lot, and my pawns will do a lot once they start to promote. Now the rook is actually trapped as well. So this looks like game over, but thank you for the game. Uh, I did not, uh, let's say, uh, show why the Mora should be played. Uh, I guess it was a fairly dubious uh, demonstration because I was definitely not uh, having enough compensation. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Advantix from Italy or Mexico, no, Italy, that's right. Let's play sophisticated chess. With one C4. Some English. <laughs> and here maybe the move A6. A6 is my own invention, one that I'm quite proud of uh, on move four. I played it against Mamed Yarov in Vaikanze last year and was very soon better within like 10 moves. Uh, it looks stupid, but it's actually uh, very decent. So one, one of the rare occasions where you can actually find something interesting as early as move four in a well-known position. Lauren Strand is doing chess boxing. Yeah, I've I've heard about. I haven't really followed what's going on there, but I am aware that there is some sort of chess boxing thing uh, going to happen relatively soon. Uh, and if the choice is between Lauren Strand and An Aman Hamilton, I mean, I think we have to uh, we have to root for uh, Lauren Strand, right? The voice of chess. Definitely rooting for uh, for him. Uh, but mainly, yeah, it, I guess it will be quite a spectacle to, uh, to watch. I played against one of the better chess boxers. Uh, I, not in chess boxing, but in, uh, let's say, regular chess, just to make that very clear. Uh, what is his name? His name is... 
Carl Strugnell, I think, if I recall correctly. Carl Strugnell, chess boxer. Uh, we played in uh, on the Isle of Man in the first round one year. Uh, normal game of chess. He played fairly okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, <laughs> uh, it would have been much worse if we had uh, been chess boxing instead. So, luckily, we played only chess, and I managed to do it. Managed to beat him. In general, I'm not too sure what the point of uh, chess boxing uh, is. Like, why why do you have to do the two at the same time? I never really understood, to be absolutely honest. Like, wouldn't it make more sense to do boxing one day and chess another day? But, uh, but okay, I mean, as, as long as some people enjoy it. I guess uh, as a spectator, it should be quite uh, quite fun because it's so different. The two types of uh, the two activities from each other. So, uh, but I haven't actually watched any any sort of live chess boxing ever. Uh, so those are just my guesses. We are playing three plus zero, and my opponent is not blundering anything, which uh, is not very pleasant. Actually, I have to focus a bit. I might otherwise get flagged. And now the pawn on d5 is hanging, and I believe I'm simply winning it. But it's not the most valuable pawn uh, ever. <laughs> it's a nice pawn, but it's not like a game-winning pawn necessarily. If the knight on e6 is well placed, and uh, the limited material always gives some drawing chances. If I can trade both rooks, then for sure I'm winning. Like that's one hundred percent sure. I think. Uh, but as long as we have only, as we have one rook, uh, one set of rooks on the board, uh, it's not clear to me that I'm winning here. Mm. Rook c8, therefore, should be played. Yeah, rook d8. Now I'm I'm sure that I'm winning. So usually the bishop is much stronger than the knight on an open board, and this combined with the fact that I'm an extra pawn is enough. Like knight a5 now is natural, but then the knight gets dominated by the bishop. Bishop d5, and now the king can just enter. And yeah, this is this is hopeless. Pawn endings, pawn down are almost always completely lost. So yeah, some sort of race black will take, but uh, I will be uh, many many tempi ahead. So, but not such a bad game from from black, and also good tempo. So thank you very much. Uh, let me see who else is here. Morazzo chess. Mora or Morazzo chess. Not sure how to pronounce. Three plus zero. I think, yeah. Mm, let's play this line with c5. It was a line that always fascinated me as, as a kid. Uh, that you can give up the bishop here and play f5. For to, As a kid, it was super fascinating to me uh, that you can play like this. Uh, but uh, like when I grew older, I understood that it has some resemblance, for instance, uh, uh, to the name Indian, of course, that Black is playing for these weak pawns here. Uh, and also the sort of semi-blocked center. Uh, G4 is an interesting try. G4 followed by E4, G4 followed by H3. I think what you do as black in general is after h3, you play g3 to keep it blocked. Uh, that's the general plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, now the pawn on e4 is hanging. And if, I think white really has to follow up with, the, with h3. 
But yeah, by the way, this this would most probably uh, also be the last uh, last game for me because uh, yeah, we are kind of supposed to to end uh, end seven thirty. So, like, if you have any any more uh, important questions that you need me to answer to, so now is your time. Otherwise, you will have to wait until next time. So. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, now castling short is is quite uh, quite dubious strategically, uh, because now this pawn is actually a huge asset. Like it's not only an extra pawn, but it actually also provides me with a with a nice attack. So I think White has lost uh, lost track a little bit of the position within the last couple of moves. Now, if only I could get my queen to h4, I will try to do it by playing e5. So how do we do this? I would like to play queen h4 immediately, but currently it's not possible. Can I prepare it somehow? I'm looking at like knight takes e4, knight takes queen h4. Okay, white will take my knight on f3. And it will not be... Uh, well, at least to me, it's not so clear whether there's a mate or not there. Uh, so I guess I will have to do it a bit slower. Maybe just go here. If it takes, I can take back with the rook. Come queen h4. What do I think about the Danish gambit? Danish gambit is... Uh, it's not so bad, I think. In general, these gambits after e4, e5 are, are not so bad because you get a lot of... Uh, uh, initiative, and if black doesn't know it, it can be quite scary. And for instance, I I even lost to the king's gambit in a classical game once. Uh, so it's the, no, or twice even, no, once, and once I had a bad position. So uh, yeah, definitely not uh, unreasonable to try out some gambits as as white. And Danish gambit also is possible for classical chess. I still think it's possible. Uh, but it's the sort of gambit that is much better if your opponent is not prepared against it. So I wouldn't play it in many games in a row, many consecutive games. I would rather play it as a surprise weapon from time to time. And then it can work quite well. Here I have really misplayed my position completely because uh, my queen, if I don't have any tricks... Actually, why did I do this? Because rook takes b7 was not a threat. I would have rook takes g3 and the rook on f1 would hang. But if I don't really get get any threats, then my queen is out of play. So I'm not sure what uh, what I'm doing here. Basically, I'm waiting for white to blunder rook e3 and then I will take. That's my main, uh, main plan, but uh, that's not really uh, very impressive. It could definitely be very scary. Yes, yes, you understood me very well. Mm. This trade makes it a bit easier because now my queen is no longer uh, kind of trapped. So now I would simply double. Maybe I can actually push this later on as well. Although there is queen g5, so I should be a little bit careful. Uh, yeah, this is a good move from white. But now I'm threatening to take an f2, which is rather a big threat. I will play this in a sort of methodical fashion. King g1 is a good move. Spotting that I was threatening to take on uh, uh, on g3. Okay, let's go here. How do I break through? Should I play? I don't want to play h5 as long as queen g5 is there. So maybe this, and now h5, h5. This is probably the way. This makes a lot of sense. Here I feel that I'm keeping full control while making progress. And now, okay, this, I'm threatening g3, I guess. Looks like I'm threatening it. I think this is going to be mate. Yeah, hg, now I take, knight takes. Knight take g3, rook h4, and it's going to be mate very soon. So this was... Uh, after all, a fairly clean game. I think White should not combine this G4 gambit with with castling short. That that cannot be the way to play it. So, 
but yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope I will see some of you in uh, Katowice next week for the European Rapid and Blitz. Will be a great uh, festival. And uh, yeah, until next time, see you around. Thanks for today. Enjoy 12 days of chess heaven at the Chessable Sunway Sieges International Chess Festival. Escape to the sun this December and take part in the spectacular Chessable Sunway Chess Festival situated in Sieges, near Barcelona. Play alongside top GMs including Ivanchuk, Isipenko, Adiban and more. 10 round open tournaments with over 27,000 euros in prizes. Chess lectures from GMs most days, beer tasting plus sushi, pizza, paella and cocktail masterclasses. World Cup watch parties, table tennis, table football and blitz chess tournaments. Even better, Chessable Pro members play for free. You can find out more by going to Sunway Siege's website. Visit chessable.com slash sunway. Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board, remember which page you're on, or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive Chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery.